Hello, hello, Professor Fiore here. And in this video, we are going to discuss active current limiters, a very simple little circuit you can add to something like an amplifier to prevent damaging currents from reaching your load. Loudspeaker, for example. So, to summarize, this device is kind of like a fuse or a circuit breaker in that it will prevent an excessively large current from going out and damaging whatever it is you're driving, like a loudspeaker. It is, however, generally preferable to a fuse or a circuit breaker because fuses have to be replaced when they blow and circuit breakers have to be reset. The active limiter, on the other hand, when the current is too high, will limit it. It will set it to a maximum value. And then when the input signal changes, in other words, the activation goes down so that you don't have that damaging level, the active limiter simply stops working. In other words, it stays out of the way until it's needed. So when it's, when it's needed, when the output current, load current gets too high, hits this threshold, then the active, current, the active limiter jumps in, prevents the current from going any higher, saves your load or your amplifier or both, and then when that input signal goes away or the problem goes away, the active current limiter sort of steps out of the way. So it's not just an input signal being, let's say, too large. You could, for example, have much too low of a load. You could accidentally short the load of an amplifier. You know, if you think about a Class B amplifier or, you know, Class A, whatever, Class B being very common, um, if you accidentally short it, which is really easy to do, you know, you got a stranded wire for, let's say, a loudspeaker, one of those little strands could come undone and accidentally hit the other terminal. End result, you have a dead short. There really is no current limiting in the amplifier. So, boom, you turn it on, and pretty soon, you know, even with an, a small input signal, vut, you can exceed the safe operating area of your output transistors. Now, finally, one of the nice things about the active limiter compared to a fuse or a circuit breaker is it's very easy to set a desired level. So if you want, for example, two and a quarter amps, you can do that. I want three and a third amps, you can do that. You can even make it adjustable. Kind of hard to do with a circuit breaker or a fuse. Plus, the active limiter is very fast. It, bang, comes right on when that signal is, uh, is uh, too large, when that current is too large, and turns right off. So, you know, with a fuse or with a circuit breaker, there is a time lag. It has to be above a level for a certain amount of time. All right? Okay, so let's take a look at a basic Class B amplifier that we are going to use for the base of our active current limiter. So we've seen this before, all right? NPN, PNP, push-pull configuration. All I've done here is I've added meters to measure out the load current and the load voltage. Now I want to get a fairly large input signal here. I got an eight volt peak, one kilohertz signal, and I'm running on plus and minus 10 volt supplies. So we expect just a smidge under 8 volts. I don't want to bring this thing all the way up to clipping for reasons which will be apparent pretty soon. So, you know, we're going to be close to clipping, but not quite there. So this thing has a gain of just under 1, so we expect a little less than 8 volts peak out here. And with a 100 ohm load, we can just use ohms law, right? 8 volts, 100 ohms, we expect just under 80 milliamps peak of current. So we'll do a little transient analysis. And here we go. Let's get our legend out here. All right, so the I load is really dinky and I'll separate the curves in a second so we can see it. But here is the this sort of uh, olive color, right? That's the generator, right? Bank, there's the generator and right below it in the maroon is the load. So we're seeing what we expect, just a little bit of loss through the amplifier, no biggie. Now. Separate the curves out so we can see that current. Here's our load current, and we can see, all right, it's peaking at just under 80 milliamps, as expected. Looks really nice, no distortion. Everybody's happy, okay? Now, 
here comes the active limiter. What we're going to do is put something out here so that when the current gets too high, we can throttle back the transistor. Now I'm only going to show half of this. So here's the inclusion, right? So here's the original circuit. Notice we're going to drop in a transistor and a resistor right here. Bonk. Everything else is the same. I'm only drawing the NPN side of it for reasons you'll see why in just a sec. But in a uh, you know, in, an, in a uh, commercial amplifier, you know, a, a running device, we would have a mirror image of it down here. In other words, there'd be another resistor, another R limit right here in this emitter. And then there would be um, another transistor, another PNP over here, sort of mirroring this. In other words, the emitter would be up here, right? The base terminal would be back here and the collector would be back here. So let me explain how this works. When you have some output current flowing down through right to the load, let's see, we're, we're looking at the positive half wave now. That current is going to create a small drop across this R limit. And this is only 10 ohms. It's not very big. So with, you know, a modest current, we're looking at, you know, a tenth of a volt or two tenths of a volt or something like that. That's not enough to turn on T3, this transistor over here. So if it's off, it's like it's not even there. And what ends up happening is the current just goes out to the load and things operate pretty much as you would expect. Same thing if we had it down here, you know, if we were pulling current in, the same thing, we would have a tiny little voltage and it wouldn't turn on the other PNP transistor. Okay, what happens when the current gets too big? Well, in this case, right, I've got a 10 ohm resistor. So if I had a current through here that was big enough it would produce a voltage of around seven tenths of a volt. Why is that like a magic number? Why did I say 0.7? Well, remember, it takes seven tenths to turn on the base emitter, you know, if these are silicon transistors. So when that happens, when this output current gets big enough, then the drop across our limit will turn on T3, and when it does, this will start conducting current away from the base of T1, the output transistor. And what happens is it just dumps it into the load. Well, here's the important thing, because it's going right down the collector emitter. There is no beta multiply, which is, we, which is what we get off of T1. All right, so as the um, input current would increase, normally you'd multiply it up by beta and get this bigger output load current. But what happens here is if the current gets big enough, this drop increases to the point where T3 turns on and that conducts that extra current down this way. So we only get a very, very, very small increase in load current because it's not being multiplied by the beta of T1, right? This is, is sort of shorting around T1. And then of course, when the current goes down, that voltage drops, you know, we don't get seven tenths anymore. And this transistor turns off, it's out of the circuit. So like I said, it gets out of the way when there is no damaging current. It's like it's not even here, right? So that's, that's really quite handy. And we get to program what that current limit is through the value of our limit. So as I bring this resistor value up, Ohm's law would say, geez, to get that 7 tenths, I need a smaller current, right? So the bigger this resistor is, the lower the current limit level is. If you want a really high current limit, you're going to need a really small resistor here. All right, so the way I have it set up, this thing is just barely going to start clipping, limiting. And that is, in fact, what's going to happen. If you're going to limit the current, you're going to start clipping the load. But, you know, our idea here is, well, that's preferable to damaging the output transistors. Like I said, we could accidentally short this. There is nothing... Without this circuit, there's nothing here to limit that load current. Boom, pop goes the weasel. Two transistors fried, okay? So, do a little transient analysis over here. And we can see, look, here's my load, right, right here, V load. And we can see, hey, wait a minute, that's sort of flat topping. I mean, compare what's going on down here, right? That's getting a little flat. Now, if we separate out the curves, 
You know, if you look closely at this current, you can see that's not nice and flat, or excuse me, not nice and round. There's a little bit of flat spotting to it. Okay, that might not be easy to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my R limit over here, and I'm going to increase this a bit. All right, so with uh, a 15 ohm, I'm only going to need around 50 milliamps, right? So, you know, when you multiply that out, that's what you're going to get for, you know, around 7 tenths of a volt, right? 50 mils times 15 ohms is going to get you around 7 tenths. So we should see a, a limit in this case of around 50 mils and 50 mils through the, the 100 ohm load will get us a, a maximum load of around 5 volts. So there should be some pretty obvious clipping that we'll see here. And then we're going to take a look at the current waveform, and you'll see that, yeah, it definitely has been limited. Alrighty. Oh, look at that. Okay, so let's see. Put this on here, and what are we getting? Okay, we're getting, well, we're getting virtually 5 volts, right? It's 4.9558. So that's where the clip level is, right? All right, now take a look at the current and boy, you can see that thing flat spotted, right? Now it's really obvious, right? And we're getting just about 50 mils as we expected, just that Ohm's law relationship. Now you'll notice it's actually coming out maybe to be, you know, a smidge over seven tenths. But like I said, you know, you're getting some of this current that's going to go out this way. Um, so you do see a small rise over what you would expect as far as a strict Ohm's law application with seven tenths of a volt. You know, we use seven tenths of a volt as a, an approximation anyway, but you can just kind of monkey with that value a little bit to get precisely what you need. So, you know, for example, if I went to, oh, I don't know, 12, all right, that's not going to be quite as extreme, the limit that is. All right, so there we are up near six. I come back here, collect those so we can do a nice AB. All right, and you can see, okay, smaller resistor, the current limit is a little higher. You know, that was the one we had 10 ohms, right? So there's your 10 ohms. You're just starting to limit the current up there. There's 12 ohms. There's uh, the 15. You know, obviously, if we went to something like 20, it's going to be even more extreme. All right, boom, drop down even more. And if we take a look at that uh, current, boom, there you go, right? So 40 mils through this, we get the 4 volts that we would expect. But 40 mils through 20 gives you 0.8 volts. Like I said, you get a little bit of current flow through here. So not exactly seven tenths, right? But, you know, we can use that as a first level approximation. That's fine. Now, those of you that are kind of sharp eyed might look at this and say, wait a minute, isn't there, going back to my original resistor, isn't there a little bit of a voltage divider between our limit and our load? Isn't that what's doing this clipping thing? Right? I mean, that's a, you know, a decent hypothesis to throw out there, right? Well, there is, in fact, a voltage divider effect, but that's not what's causing the limit in the current. That does create a little bit of loss. In other words, the gain through the amplifier is a little bit less than unity. We can prove that very easily by just deleting the transistor over here, right? So now I still have the resistor, so I should still see a voltage divider effect if there is one, but it's not going to turn on the transistor, right? This is not connected to anything. As a matter of fact, that, you know, I could just completely get rid of it so it doesn't even exist. All right. And let's see what happens. All right. So you can see, yeah, there is a voltage divider effect, right? This peak is not quite as high as this peak because we don't have a limiting resistor over here. So that's saying, well, okay, the gain's a little bit less than one, but there's no limiting. If we look at the uh, current curve, we can see, well, it's a nice smooth sine wave, right? There's no flat spotting to it. So it's not the fact that this is creating a voltage divider. That's a separate issue. It's the whole thing about having the transistor there that turns on and 
uh, you know, shunts the current away from the transistor. Ultimately, what will happen is, of course, you're going to keep drawing current out here in a real world amplifier um, until the preceding stage back here saturates because you can't get any more current than that into the space. So mm, once you reach that level, that's it, the end, there's your current limit. Whereas here, you know, we got a source that can just keep pumping out current. So we're going to see a little bit of a, uh, let's say, a more generous effect as far as that current. Like, like I said, we went up to like 0.8 volts on here before it really flat topped. Okay, so there, there's that, that sort of effect going on. All right. But, you know, like I said, um, ordinarily we can just do a 0.7 approximation and go from there. All right. So wherever you want to do it. All right, we just throw in that resistor value that we need, this our limit value with that extra transistor that I have so conveniently deleted, and um, there you go. So there's your active limiter. Just remember, I'm only showing one side. You would do the same thing down here. And this trick, this idea, maybe I shouldn't call it a trick, can be applied in many different ways. You could add this to uh, maybe a Class A amplifier. You could. This is something we would do for current limiting on... Um, uh, like a power supply regulator, you could do something like that. So it's applicable in many different uh, situations, not just in a little Class B amplifier like this one. All right, great. So I hope you uh, hope you got something good out of this. Any questions? Put them down in the comment area, and I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.